Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. In this episode we'll be looking at a 100 LED RGB string that I bought from eBay. Very similar to the 200 LED one that I've already purchased, but this one is 100 LEDs. So here's a listing. Paid about £12 for this. It's not bad value. Always had to make sure that it was a 3 wire type, not a 4 wire, because if it was a 4 wire then it wouldn't be addressable. But everything seems good with this. It says it's RGBW, but it's actually RGB. Well, that's what um, WLED says anyway, so... Anyway, let's take a look at it. So, use a little bit of paperwork. Inside the box, we have the LEDs. We have an infrared a controller so let's do some current measurements on this considering this is supposed to be powered by a standard USB uh, port let's see what type of current it draws so straight off the bat it's drawing 430 milliamps it's not bad quite high current draw in standby 128 milliamps in standby that's um yeah it's a bit how are you doing But yeah, that should be more than capable to be supplied by a standard USB port and everything's looking good, just changing some colours. Let's try some of the routines. So it has some quite nice routines on this. But we can do better with that with WLED. And there it just spiked up to 900 milliamps on this routine. And there it is again, 900 milliamps. So it's got potential to draw near enough an amp. Maybe if it was drawing an amp constantly, maybe to get a little bit warm, but... Luckily, in WLED, we can tune all these settings and bring it down to a safe level. Well, plenty of um, settings with the infrared remote. Plenty of colours, plenty of patterns. Got timer facilities on it. But essentially, we're not interested in that. And then we are back up to 900 milliamps again, just on this one routine. Must just be because of the high amount of white that it's producing. And there's a switch on the little board that cycles through the routines. So it's all good if you just want it as a standalone. Uh, lights for, say, your Christmas tree or something like that. But, we don't want to do that. And here's the, the USB plug part of it. So we'll take this apart and have a look inside. It's probably just going to be like every other one I've taken apart. And yep, yeah, infrared. Infrared receiver, infrared decoder IC, and a nondescript microprocessor that's got its number uh, scrubbed off but you can tell it's a microprocessor because there's a crystal nearby now there's one thing with these leds is that the data line is the outside line not the middle line like on some other led strings that's tripped me up in the past with these because the silt screen was printed wrong there's a closer view of the board So one of those is a microprocessor, one of those is the infrared decoder, and you've got the infrared receiver, and the switch. That's probably one of those penny microprocessors that you can buy. But we're not interested in that. Goodbye. 
so I'm just adding some extension cable on it just to make it conform with the wiring that I already have for my LED lights that I have here I will try and post another video later on in the year showing what LED uh, WLED can do when connected up with MQTT So we'll just heat shrink everything up, make it nice. I'll pop some ferrules on the end, make it nice and easy to put into terminal blocks. So I've actually switched the wiring round on this now, so red will be positive. White will be negative and green will be data. That conforms to the wiring that I have already set up here. And they're nice and neat. Last little bit of shrink sleeving, just as a bit of a, a relief so the wire doesn't split too far down. And there we have it, all nice and neat. So here's my custom built WLED controller that I use for around Christmas time. This is just my standalone test unit that I use to test all these LED strings. So let's wire this up and have a look. The software WLED is a fantastic piece of software. It allows you to do so much. We'll have a look at um, a couple of the features of it today. I seem to be learning more and more about it the more I play with it. Plus, um, the developer is very active on this and puts lots of plenty, uh, plenty of new features. Anyway, we powered it up, switch it on, and on come the LEDs. Obviously, I've connected to the WLED um, software that's built on the ESP8266. So it's already set to my last one. So what we'll do is we'll set it down to 50 LEDs. If we do that, power cycle it, you see that half the string comes on, and it does. So we'll go back to LED preferences, and we'll select 100. power cycle it and everything comes on nicely so altering the brightness on WLED is a good way of limiting the amount of current this draws and just by altering the brightness just a little bit can have a dramatic effect on the current drawn so we'll just go through a few of the uh, presets. It is sat on static colour at the moment and if we scroll down here select it to random cycle and now the the nice pretty patterns start to appear. You can imagine this on an 8 foot Christmas tree it, uh, the effect is quite nice what I've done in the previous years is I found my favorite effects and put them onto a sequence so it changes the effect every hour and switches the lights on and off at certain times so they're always on and they go off at a, like 11 o'clock at night as you can see plenty of 
plenty of nice settings, plenty of absolutely plenty of patterns you can play with. Some of them look good on a tree, some of them look good around a window. So let's have a play with another setting. Now there's something really clever you can do with this WLED software, is that you can set segments up. So what I've done here is I've split the, the, um, the LED string in, into half, so there's roughly 50 a side and you can actually set i've just done this basically simple just split it in half but you can set one side of the 50 to one sequence and set the other side to the other sequence and i suppose there's i suppose there is a limitation on how many you can have but it makes for an interesting pattern because then you could have like say the first 10 of these on one pattern, then the next 60 on another pattern, then the rest on another pattern. Or if you if you put the LED say around a window and you've got um, um, some overspill, should we say, you can just switch those off. So as you can see there, we've got random colours on one side and a static fade wipe color on the other side and that's just by using the segments which is quite an interesting um, feature there's some of the settings so it's set to standard WS281 and there's plenty of settings in there to play with now I have this hooked up to my home MQTT a broker that then is controlled via node red so once you've got control over it via node red possibilities are endless you know there's um web interface and all sorts you can do with it see there's even sequences you can uh, timers you can do with this but when you've got node red you don't need to have individual timers to be honest you don't need well you, you can use node red but there's a sync feature on this that allows units on the same UDP port to synchronize with this unit. So you could have one master unit slaving off to others. But I just keep them all hooked up to Node Red because then I can um, either individually control them or do a group topic and group them together. So we've deleted all the segments. Now we're back on standard 100 LEDs. As you can see, nice patterns. So, all in all, no trouble with this string of LEDs. Not like I had with the last set. So the idea is, is just to find my favourite ones and place them into a timer uh, on a sequence and then have them sequencing. So you could have the Christmas tree sequence to one sequence, the windows sequence to another, another light sequence to another, or you can have them all sequenced together. Possibilities are endless with MQTT and Node-RED, especially when you have that amount of control over it. And there we have it that's it for this video so don't forget to like subscribe turn your notifications on if you like these videos
and thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.